We're standing here at the Olympic Sports Complex on Mount Von Hovenberg in Lake Placid, New York. The original bobsled track here was built for the 1932 Olympic Games. That track was an amazing 26 corners, 1.5 miles long. I mean, it's really hard for me to imagine driving a bobsled with that kind of intensity of concentration that is required on a track that long. So for the 1980 Olympics, they shortened the track by removing the first 10 corners, which was about a half a mile of track. It still remained really fast. In fact, over the years, two people were killed on that track because it was so dangerous. In 2000, they replaced the old track with a new modern combined bobsled loose track. So you might be wondering, what kind of person does this crazy sport? Well, that's why we're here. Let's go speak to someone who has been around the sport much longer than me to find out. Come on. I'm here with the Bob father, Tony Carlino. It's a term of endearment sometimes, and perhaps not a term of endearment other times. Talk to me a little bit about the, the kind of athletes that, that come into the sport. You know, um, certainly from a physical standpoint, you know, you need explosiveness and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm curious to hear your take on that as an athlete, as, as a coach for many years, as an administrator. Look at our women's bobsleigh team now. Uh, Tiana Matheson, Lolo Jones, attracting fabulous athletes, gold medal, world record, Olympic record holders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, athletes at that level and the same in the men's programs across the board. What do you think the, the I guess, the mental makeup of an athlete coming into the sport is now? Are they I think daredevils or...? They're daredevils, but these are athletes that are also in control of their emotions, that are able to take a danger element and perhaps a fear element and put it in the back room and get through that to perform on the ice. Because everybody always has some trepidation, so to speak. And that's always there, and, and, and that challenge is always there. That's why they're not uh, lining up out to the parking lot to do these sports. You know, what were your first thoughts when you heard that Jamaica had a bobsled team? Well, when I first heard that Jamaica had a bobsled team, you know, it was kind of like with a sideways smile, going, what is this, a PR thing? What are they gonna show up with? You know, is it a circus, is it real? When we saw you guys, we knew it was real. There were real high quality, great athletes showing up for the Jamaican program. But my mistake was, is that after Howard Seiler decided he wasn't able to coach in 88, he asked me to be the coach. And I told Howard that I don't think I could take the job because Tom Selleck probably wouldn't play me in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember us being um, in Calgary, uh, and it was one day after training, we were at the Athlete Training Center, and I'm walking past a U.S. team and you were in there cursing them out and going, even the Jamaicans? I tried to use it as a lever for my team that a few guys that were on the beach 60 days ago were now on the Calgary track where we're going to have all sorts of World Cup competitions mm -hmm. and, and they beat us at the start. It was, you know, a big motivator for my team yeah. and I was well, there to help know, motivate them. I know, them. they killed us the next day. Yeah. I, I mean, there's something I talk about all the time how, uh, you know, of course when people hear about the Jamaica bobsled team, they always have that sideways smile. Yeah. Uh, and think it's a joke, a joke, but people who are around the sport who saw us out there doing the work and creating results, you know, knew, knew differently. It's absolutely certain, and it was a real, honest effort by the athletes. Uh, it was a, it was a great program, and it gave our sport more exposure than it would ever have had. Similar to what Eddie Eagle did for, for well, ski we jump. Are, we, we are the hottest thing on ice. Technically, it's very easy to, to bobsled. You pull left to go left, right to go right as a driver. But, but in my mind, the, the core of, of being a bobsledder starts in here. You have to believe in your heart. and that, that is, There's I mean, no what, question. You that? had to have heart because remember also, in our time, it wasn't so easy to do these sports. So the love of the sport, the danger element, and everything that we would fight against and work against, you had to have the heart yeah. for the sport. You had to have the heart to come back day after day, knowing that you've been banged and bruised and you just had to go training. The there was, and there was no question. You had to go down the hill. You had to have the... The, the, the desire to go down the hill, but you said the courage and the heart. Mm -hmm. The heart mm -hmm. was the most important yeah. thing. What was it like that, that very first run you took back in the 70s? 
Well, back in the 70s again, remember there was no sides on the sleds, there was no face piece on the helmets. Mm -hmm. As I said before, we that's, were one step above helmet. the leather helmet football right. days. And I came up here and there was a guy that needed a brakeman. I had no clue what kind of driver he was, whether he was a national team guy or just some guy so out of a So did you bar. know what you were getting yourself into? I had into? no clue <laughs> until we got about 200 meters down this course yeah. and I was saying, oh my God, what am Too I late. doing here? <laughs> and th that was it. And the further and the faster we went, I was just going, this is the most unbelievable experience I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. We got to the finish, I put the brakes on, I guess I put them on the right spot, and the guy asked me if I wanted to go for another run. And at that point in time, I had to make my decision. Which way am I going? Am I going to go back to the top? Because if I don't, it's all over. Right. Mm -hmm. And I decided, yeah. yes, I wanted to mm -hmm. go back up. The first ride was the easiest. The second was the tougher. That's true. To decide. Okay. My Good. first run up in, um, in Calgary, Joe Kilburn put us on. From, uh, it's, it's a half mile and you yeah. know it's well you get 30 <coughs> miles an hour maybe if that fast and it felt like I was flying um, I was scared to death by the third run I was hooked that was it it's, I was hooked. and then it, be, it becomes it's it's addictive and uh, you know I have to tell you even for our own ego to say you're a bobsledder made me feel pretty good yeah because everybody knew that we were special yeah yeah. And we knew we were special. Every guy that did this sport was special on all levels. From the Olympic medalist all to the, the guy that was finishing last in the club races. They were all special. To meet that challenge, to go down this hill and have the heart to do it day after day. Because the difference between the number one guy and the number 20 guy might be one mile an hour. I can remember when I started driving the first year. I would take a run down this track get out of my sled at the finish, my brakeman was going to take the sled, and I'd end up just about running back up the track watching other sleds going. Yes. And then you get back to the top and you go, my God, I just ran a mile uphill and I'm <laughs> let's, still let's wired. Let's do it again. I'm yeah. still wired. And that was our life. Yeah, that absolutely. Was our life. One of the things I, I remember, you know, on my time being on the circuit is just how close-knit all of us were as athletes. I mean, when we were at the track racing, especially on race day, especially at the Olympic Games, we weren't, we weren't friends. But as soon as the race was over, we we're all buddies again. I mean, what are your thoughts on, I, on I just I haven't how we seen all... you in probably 25 years. And we were as macho as they come. And there are very few times in my life when I go like that. <laughs>